said, you ever forget you can't take liquids on an airplane and then security makes you chug your whole bottle of hand sanitizer in front of them? Will NL win this one? Yes. Start a prediction. I'll tell you the, the genesis of that as well, because my, my mom had to go to the airport yesterday to fly home. And then she was stressed and she's like, I've got like a 50 milliliter container of sunscreen. I have like a, uh, you know, I have a little bit of like makeup remover and I got this bottle of hand sanitizer. And I said, oh, you're going to be fine unless the hand sanitizer is over 30 milliliters. Then they're going to make you drink the whole bottle in front of them. She didn't even plus to it. She just went, yeah, I'm sure I'll be fine. In my head, I was like, this joke needs to reach a wider audience. Right off the top of the dome piece, and it, it just floundered in vivo and found a new life online. She's tired of it? I mean, probably true. That's probably true. Which is <laughs> nice joke, son. Uh, another uh, latest in a long line of not taking things seriously. More classic Ryan. So true, so true. I was asked to estimate this in an interview. How many liters of water are there on Earth? Look, okay, so this is one of those things. I learned this from Livestream Fail. It's called a Fermi problem. They're probably not actually going to judge you based on how close you are to the correct answer, but they want to here you go through the process of how you make the estimate to see how you are as a problem solver. Rather than just be like, I don't know, a million, they want you to be like, well, 70% of the Earth is water, and uh, the Earth, I, if I had to approximate, it was, you know, like this many square kilometers or something like that. And then you're going to be like, okay, and then the density of water is like, you know, one kilometer square of water is equal to like a, a thousand thousand liters of it. And you're then, you, then you go, I don't know, a million? <laughs> Something like that. You have to, they, they just want to hear you go through the steps of making an educated guess. And even if you're wrong, at least, you know, because I mean, that's, imp I mean, it depends on the job, I guess, but that's how I, I, you're going to laugh at this, and you're also probably going to think that I'm making this up. In university, and I'm not the smartest guy in the world, allegedly. In university, I won two guess the amount of jelly bean in the jar contest in a row. And all I did, and it, it, there's a huge amount of luck that went into it. But all I did was I like looked at like the bottom layer of the jar, and I was like, okay, if you look at it like as a circle... Then there's like, I don't know, 30 jelly beans on this layer, and it's like 20 layers tall. And then I apply like the formula for the volume of a cylinder or something like that. And I'm like, okay, then it's approximately this. And I, I, I want to be clear, I did not get the exact number, but I was close enough to win the damn jelly beans. Increases your lowest stat. Maybe luck? I could take luck. I could take range, I suppose. What was it? I don't remember. I don't know. It was probably like a million? Something like that? That was like 16 years ago now. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Wait, you only won the jelly beans? Is that not the way that it's supposed to work? I always thought you win the jar of jelly beans. Now everyone's like, you got ripped off. Anytime I've ever participated in that contest, the prize has been a, a jar of jelly beans. It's usually... Well, why not? It's usually a cash prize plus the jelly beans? Dude, no wonder inflation is running so hot right now. People getting cash prizes for guessing the number of jelly beans in a jar? You didn't do anything. I shouldn't have taken that spirit heart yet. A cash prize? Would you study in university? I don't want to talk about it. It's biology. 
I was actually talking about it with my mom because she was like, you know, why did you study biology? And then I went off on a damn rant. I was like, well, I enjoyed biology in uh, high school, but and I, I did well in it. But at the same time, uh, I feel like the current education system, at least at the school that I went to, uh, because you spend all of your time in school essentially taking tests, uh, I feel like I never actually learned like what a biologist would actually do in their career until I went to university. And by the time we started doing that shit, it was too late to change. <laughs> So like it's instead of I really feel like for a lot uh, some kids are like you know unicorns and they know what they want to do from like the time they're like five or six you know like their dad's an engineer they were uh, they were crafting stuff even when they were little kids they always enjoyed it in high school they're like I want to be an engineer they just know but for other kids like the majority I would say school doesn't really teach you like what you want to do for a job in my experience it teaches you like what your favorite school subject is so i didn't really like the idea of being a biologist i, I came to realize later i simply liked learning about biology but learning about biology by like reading a biology textbook and like uh taking tests is not what you do when you're in biology it's what you do when you're like a biology student and i guess to a lesser extent like a biology teacher that's why I think like so many, I mean, and again, I have nothing but respect for teachers and I, I did the vocation myself, but I feel like so many kids that I went to high school with ended up becoming teachers because in school it doesn't actually, they don't focus on like the jobs that you might actually get as a result of the things that you're studying, but instead, we don't need this, we don't need it, we don't need it, sure, give me that. Instead of teaching you like what and I'm not saying like everything needs to be stem oriented quite the opposite but like the idea of hey if you are studying biology then just so you know like here's what a biologist actually does it's a lot of detail oriented lab work um you uh will be like in a dark laboratory running the same kind of like very consistent tests over and over I would have been like oh fuck that I'm gonna, I'm out of here. I'm not taking biology, are you crazy? But that's why I feel, I guess I never made my point. I feel like so many of the kids that I went to high school with ended up becoming teachers because literally you spent like 18 years straight in school and then people are like, what do you like? And you're like, I don't know, I school? I guess I'll just become a teacher? Strength, hanged man. Empress, High Priestess, Strength. I would, I just want a key. Empress, High Priestess, Empress, give me an Empress, take an Empress. I'm a teacher, that's sort of how it happened. I, and I get it, man, I get it. But I'm like, you know, we have a, a we have a, a teacher at the front of the class, gum room. We have 30 kids in the class, and like eight kids in the class want to be teachers because all they've done their entire life is school, and they like it. Well, you're like, okay, something about the ratio doesn't seem to make any damn sense here. If every class of 30, if, if you need one teacher per 30 students, and every teacher creates eight teachers out of their 30 students, pretty soon it's like... I mean, I guess I wouldn't say we have too many teachers, but like, you know, it's uh, we should start diversifying like what the the kids get to experience in school. So maybe like, I, that's we in school we had one take your kid to work day, and take your kid to work day is literally like, you go do your mom or your dad's job for like two hours, and then you're like. It, that doesn't give you enough of a an idea of whether or not you would like to actually do this job for a living. They should skip 11th grade and just have you go do a job, a different job every day. That would be a that would be school, man. Or rather after you graduate mm, after you graduate from 12th grade which is where, you know, that's that's our matriculation from high school in Canada. You just go do a job 
five times a week. And then you discover like, hey, is this something I'd actually be interested in? Nope. Okay, well, moving on then. Tomorrow, I'm going to be um, the president. <laughs> Let's see. And then the day after that, I'm going to be a chocolate taster. And then, uh, and then I'm going to be fixing septic tanks. So I feel like if I spent a day as a biologist in 10th grade, I never would have taken biology in university. What a shot, dude. So I'm like, oh my god, you're just doing like titrations nonstop. I thought it would be like, you know, just people asking me, hey, come up with a reason why uh, rhinos have horns. And I'd be like, I don't know, maybe it helped them uh, avoid being eaten. And they'd be like, holy shit, this guy's a damn genius. Here's, here's the money you ordered. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? I think I'm going to use the Empress card, personally. Anyway, that's all I got. I just think that, you know, the I guess it's, it's a bit of a position to take, is the idea that school's predominant purpose should be to prepare you for a career. A lot of people would disagree with that. I think it's, you know, that's probably the predominant concern for, like, the average... 20 year old and their parents for sure that doesn't mean like if you go to school as a you know a, a 50 year old that you have to be retraining you could just be doing it for like personal development like sometimes people they, they think it's like a little own but actually it's very complimentary they say what are you doing with your programming degree and first off I say it's not a programming degree I uh, it's a programming associates diploma. So first off, thanks for thinking that I put in like a lot more work than I actually did. Secondly, I'm fucking enjoying my life, like playing Isaac and having people say plus two for all of my ignorant takes, despite the fact that you know there's no evidence to back them up whatsoever. It's good, man. And also, while I was in programming school, you know, I did a reasonable amount of work, but also I learned a lot and I enjoyed myself. So it was really like. You know, I don't, I don't buy into the idea that you absolutely, all education has to be, you know, career focused. But, you know, obviously you can understand why it's a big concern for a lot of people. I feel like I could have skipped, like, you know, a few uh, of those classes in 10th grade where we just did, like, factoring over and over and over again for, like, three months after learning it for the two months prior. Uh, and instead, they could have been like, hey, today you're going to just be like a... You're going to work as a baker's apprentice. Because I never got exposed to stuff like that. I don't think I would enjoy being a baker necessarily. But I think, you know, at least I would... I would work for like one day and be like, that shit sucks. I never want to do it. That's, that's experience that's valuable for you. Anyway, sorry, I've gone off too far. No, give me a key instead. Yeah, like, dude, and plus, imagine the kind of movies we would get when you became a Hollywood actor for a day. You, you could discover the newest Sam Worthington. I can't resist. Anyway, that's all I got. Keys? No keys. Okay, so I will not be able to go to my item room, but that's okay, because we'll get another gum room. <clears throat> yeah, that's the thing. I also... And I, we've talked about this way too much. Oh, you're right. Two egg secret rooms. Two, two, two egg secret rooms. We've talked about this way too much in the past, but I... My... Uh, Oh, we've already bought that. Hold on, I need to think for a second. This is there's some focus required. I don't know where a second. It would be next floor. Yeah, I, I didn't see a valid location for it. Are you going to hurt me? Yes, but you might have a key and allow me to get to an item room. I was not raised um, to have like not going to university as an option, and I think I am well suited for academia, so I'm not complaining. You know, I love getting mired in the weeds of uh, useless d discourse. <laughs> then never actually leaving the, the safe uh, 
womb of a university to venture into private industry. I think that would have fit me well as well if I was not doing what I'm doing right now. However, I do also carry a little bit of resentment because I feel like the idea like, oh, you're book smart because you learned how to read early or whatever. That means like we're not even going to expose you to careers that you might find fulfilling, like working with your hands or like making food for someone or like being of service to others or something like that. Like that would that would have been nice to at least have that kind of like well-rounded um, exposure to that. But instead it was just like, no, you're like gonna. Oh, and again, my parents were very good about basically telling me like I could do whatever I want. They weren't like, you have to go to school for something lucrative, which is how I ended up in biology, <laughs> obviously. Um, but I think it would have been, I mean, I, 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 I don't know how many times I said it, but I feel like it would be nice if uh, like the Ontario school system actually like forced you to take a class where you work with your hands. Instead of being like, oh, you poindexters are like too uh, calculus pilled. Like we're not going to force you to take shop class. They should have forced us to take shop class. Probably like 80% of the class that was forced to take it would have hated it. But we would have learned something regardless. And maybe like 20% would be like, holy cow, I could see myself doing this. That's my thinking. That's, and that's, I mean, you know. It's things I think about more, knowing that soon we're going to be sending our daughter to school as well. Like in, I don't know, like 27 months or something like that. She'll probably start kindergarten. So rather than send her to kindergarten, I'm like, I'm just going to have her work at the Home Depot for a bit. If they'll have her. Because I think she should develop those skills. Are you going to homeschool her in the trades? No, I'm actually like an idiot. Because <laughs> I never... I never did that stuff as a kid because I was ass at it. And I was never forced to because they're like, Oh, you're ass at this? Don't worry. You'll just become like a nebulous scientist. You know, you'll just be a scientist or something. Or I don't know, you'll be like a historian. They, they never forced me to... And I, again, I'm, you know, take some personal responsibility. I probably could have sorted it out by now uh, as an adult, but... You know, because I was ass at it as a kid, they were like, oh, don't don't worry about this. You're ass at it. Just read like a hundred more books instead. So now I'm like really good at reading, which is a useful life skill, but I'm insanely ass at like, you know, fixing my sink. It would be nice to, to be able to be like, oh, here's how the sink works. And that's why, and this is 100% honest, that's why programming class kind of like blew my mind. Because at first I thought that it was just like sorcery. You just type words into the computer and then it makes programs. Then I real why would you walk towards that? Then I realized as I took programming class, that actually it's just a new way of thinking, you know? There's, there's steps to take. You have a big problem, but a big problem is not a big problem. It's just an increasingly complicated series of simple small problems that you do. It's like a recipe, right? You don't just make beef wellington, you know, first you gotta figure out, you gotta plan for what cut of beef you're gonna have. And then you're like, okay, how am I gonna make my uh, phyllo dough? And then, you know, what, what tool am I gonna use to cook this in? You know, and then you just, it, it's, you don't just make beef wellington, you do like 20 steps and then at the end of it you have beef wellington. I never thought about that in my life before. I've just been like, I can't make beef wellington. So that's how I feel about fixing my sink, because now I understand it's probably just a new way of thinking about it. So if you have to, fixing your sink probably isn't just hitting the faucet with a wrench. You have to like, okay, we're going to get under the sink and then we're going to check this valve. We're going to troubleshoot what the actual problem is. And then, you know, when we see what the problem is, we're going to see if it's mechanical and we can just like fix it. Or if it's, if we're going to need a new part and then you're going to go to the Home Depot and you're going to go get the part and then you're going to like use this tool to, you know, you get, but I, it still seems daunting to me. Even though I now at least conceptually understand the way that one could do it. I want to get a charge here. Anyway. Do I have this guy on times two? No, I'm just spitting. Allegedly. Okay. 
It just sounds like you never understood math in high school. Big wrong. I it was really good at math, but again, I never knew really why I was doing it. And you always get like nonsense answers. It would always be like, uh, hey, why do we have to learn trigonometry? And then they would be like, well, Archimedes used trigonometry and uh, the length of the shadow of the Leaning Tower of Pisa to estimate the circumference of the Earth. And then you're like, okay, good for Archimedes. Like, how am I going to use trigonometry? They, they, I'm not saying that you don't use math in real life. I'm saying that, again, there was just, in my personal opinion, a little bit not enough of a... a focus on like why this is actually meaningful for you as a as an adult in the 21st century especially if you're not a huge nerd like Archimedes there's a crawl space back there okay let's check it out let's go check it out I knew that dude my fire rate is getting insane crawling in my space Confusing what wood is real. Okay. Work with me here. This is huge because we have nine lives. They won't let me do it anymore. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Blow my ass up. Kill my ass. How much? We're getting 0.04 damage every time? That doesn't seem that significant. Why don't you just take an item instead? <laughs> well, because I'm not getting the I'm not getting the 0.04 damage, you know? That could that could change everything. I do think it's worth it for one more orbital, at least, even though the damage is so small. And then. No end then. Okay, we don't really want any of this. Oh, balls of steel, kind of sick though. Maybe we do want the converter then. No, that doesn't make any sense. That may, what I just said makes no sense. And then... I just don't want to pay like a heart for him. There's a lot of good stuff here. This is, this is a tough one. I mean, BFF and Stopwatch, I think, are both takeable. I kind of wish I hadn't taken the Hierophant card. That's, that's for sure. I actually do feel like our damage is pretty good now. I think I got to save some lives just in case. Red Stew! Get me out of here. Okay. This is enough damage to do something. But we got to go fast. Faster. Hold on, though. There could be a sick item in here. Hold on, hold on. Uh, whatever, I'm here now. Dude, our damage is, is crazy. My damage is like, whoa. It's kind of unbelievable good. It's like so humongous big. Nope, see you later. We're going to have to open this one anyway. Okay, sure, why not? What do you got for me? Big teleport, big teleporter. Hero font, that's even better. Why? <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? What a ripoff, man. Spotted on the damn island starring Ewan McGregor and Scarlett Johansson. Okay, that's not a secret room. This could be a secret room. I would still love to get the tears up. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. Okay, I'm hedging my bets. I'm coming in. I'm crushing your head. Deal with the devil. Might as well look. Um, you know what? Thanks so much, but no thanks. And now, what's your opinion on Denzel Curry? I'm a big Warriors fan. I think they're gonna, honestly, like Warriors in six. That's my take. No, who are they even playing against? The Celtics? Uh, dude, come on. Everything you've ever heard me uh, say on this stream, who do you think I'm rooting for? California or Boston? Come on. Oh, the Warriors have won too much. Instead, can we have the team that's won the second most championships in history win for a change? Get over yourselves. Just like listen to yourself for two fucking seconds. They're tied for first. At least that makes sense. <laughs> I 
Are you all in on Edmonton? No, I don't. I'm I'm Rob Lowe wearing the hat that just says NFL. I just hope everybody has fun. It's been a really good NHL playoffs. And basically what I mean by that is that, especially in the Western Conference, the goaltenders have been fucking horrible. And that makes for amazing hockey. Help. Except for Otter. Dallas, nobody cares about the first round, okay? Nobody likes your house. He did play amazing, though. The first round? We're talking about the first round? Come on. I mean, you know the Rangers made it past the first round, right? And we're talking about the first round? <laughs> the first round? I'm hearing uh, notes right now that the Rangers are still in the playoffs. That being said, they did make it past the first round as well. True or false? Balls of Steel? Insane. Ooh. I don't want Counterfeit Penny, but I do want my Tears upgrade. What do you think of rapper Steph Curry? I mean, honestly, at least he didn't fall off like uh, Joe Cole, right? I don't know anything about anything, <laughs> but especially about, about modern hip-hop music. Hey, what do you guys think about Curtis's blow? Uh, Curtis blows um, the brakes. Brakes on a bus, brakes on a car, brakes that make you a superstar. Brakes on a train, brakes on a bus, brakes that make you make a fuss. These are the brakes. Break it down. I'm leaving. I'm not, I don't care about my item room. It's never going to give me more than Red Stew is already giving us. What do you think about Katsu Curry? I'm very for it, but I do have to say, and and you this is if you call me old for this, you're actually committing a crime. This is harassment. I um, I can't really eat Katsu like uh, Don Katsu anymore. Something about the fact that it's literally just a a fatty meat, uh, breaded and then deep fried. It really messes with my stomach. It's like the only food out there, except like when I had that lentil curry and thought I was having a heart attack because of the heartburn, is the only food that like after I eat it, my stomach goes like, and then I have to use the bathroom. So I, I don't eat it very much. And it mostly I feel bad for my wife because she loves it. But uh, I will, I, I use a veto on it from time to time. But you can eat fries and a burger. I I can eat fries, yeah, like to an extent. I don't really eat burgers, man. Anytime I'm at a restaurant and there's a burger on the menu, there's usually something on the menu that I prefer to the to the burger, at least cerebrally. I don't mind a burger, but I will say also that I feel like the the food category of hamburger is like one of the most overrated. Uh, food genres of all. I've had some good burgers in my life, but I've never eaten a burger where I was like, oh my god, I would love to just eat this even more. By the time I finish it, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I'm done with it. That's hot dogs? I mean, I would never order a hot dog at a restaurant either, probably. Maybe at Ikea? Most underrated? You're going to get me in trouble because we've been down this road so many times. The most underrated menu category is always the salads. People don't even give them the time of day. Like 50% of the public thinks that you only order a salad if you're on a diet. And nobody evaluates anything else on the menu through the perspective of health. They only... Uh, if a salad has the audacity to have like as many calories as another entree, people are like, what's the point? Well, the point is the same as the other entrees, you dummy. They, they taste delicious. Nobody ever goes, oh, the burger's got a lot of calories. They go, yeah, no shit. That's what, like, burgers do. 
But everybody goes, oh, a garden salad? Oh, well, you're going to get an oil-based dressing? Wow, oh, wow, geez, why don't you just, you know you could actually order like the jalapeno poppers instead. Yeah, the jalapeno poppers probably taste like dog shit. This Caesar salad is going to taste amazing. I want it. Weird take? Is it a weird take or am I just right? You ever think about that? That's not even a boomer take at all. The the boomer take is if I can't eat uh, health food at a restaurant, I'm not even going to try to eat something healthy. The boomer psychology is all or nothing. If anything, this is a millennial take. And I'm a millennial, so I'm not going to apologize for that. Are you for or against QR code menus? I'm... I don't concern myself with such trivialities. I'm a big thinker. I only think about the big issues of our times. I don't concern myself with... with what they want to distract us with. Turning the, the paper menus against the QR menu users? No, he, he will not divide us. My boomer boss says having vegetables with dinner is stupid. That's what I'm saying, man. That's like the, you know, 55-year-old man take. It's like that you would only get a salad uh, as a side if you were trying to restrict your calories. Whereas, like, sometimes I get a, a Caesar salad as a side. I might even be trying to up my calories a little bit. I mean, that's, that's the take that gets me in the most trouble with respect to food. I would rather eat like a 700 calorie Caesar salad than a 500 calorie portion of french fries. I've had some good french fries in my life, don't get me wrong. But, you know, by the time I I get a third of the way into the french fries, I'm usually like, I could take or leave this right now. Now I still finish them, of course. Because <laughs> I paid for them. And I mean, I'm always like, oh, I'm full. And then I'm like, eh, maybe I'll just finish this anyway. But a Caesar salad is just tasty, man. It's just a tasty food. Dumpy is good. Come on. You could get away with that in Dan's chat. In my chat, I don't think so. Love some blended up fish guts. Bro, all food is like disgusting. Well, all meat-based food, at least. I say this to somebody who eats, you know, my fair share. All meat is gross on, like, a psychic level. Like, you're eating the flesh of, uh, of a creature. I'm not gonna be like, oh, yo, I love steak, I love steak. Ooh, the intestines of a fish? Disgusting. I don't know, what, I'm eating, like, a cow's arm or something like that? I'm gonna be like, oh, I won't eat a, a anchovy duodenum? I'm, I'm, like, it's all the same. There are foods that, it, like, you know, meat derivatives I don't like because of the taste. Like, I don't, I don't necessarily really care for, like, liver or anything like that. Um, but otherwise, like, I always laugh when, you know, in Korea, uh, there's a, a semi-common dish called dakbal, which is chicken feet in a spicy sauce. People would be like, ooh, are you going to eat the chicken feet? And you're like, why the hell not? I ate the rest of the damn animal. I've had chicken sausage in my life. I've probably eaten anus and beak and obviously wing breast leg. I've eaten gizzard and cartilage. But you're going to be like, ooh, the foot? They walk on those. Like, grow up. Grow up and bring me a Caesar salad. And honestly, sure, I will pay for the chicken breast. I'll take a chicken breast on that. No, I'm not interested in adding three shrimp for $1,500. But I will take the chicken breast, please. To be honest, being weirded out by eating animals is kind of unnatural. My mom flew 35,000 feet into the air today. She made a cross-country journey that would have taken ancestors five generations ago, like, months. And, and then being, not even being weirded out, but just acknowledging that there's a little strangeness 
when it comes to meat is is the weird part? I don't think so. Her arms are tired. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I'm rolling. I don't care. I got tiny, but my tears got big. Why is this always double lust now? I'm not really complaining. It's kind of sick, but... What are your thoughts on lab-grown meats? You know, I think if, if they can perfect them and also make the price reasonable, I don't, I don't have any compulsion not to. Assuming it's like, you know, essentially chemically identical to the original meat product to begin with. But I'm not like much of a... I, I've, I've had my share of Beyond Burgers, I guess, and stuff like that. But I'm not much of like a fake meat guy. When I eat vegetarian, I would rather just eat like legumes. I, I really like, especially in the past few years, there's been a lot of like, you know... Uh, meat analogs, and especially like in Vancouver, see, I'm sure in a lot of cities throughout the world, you see a lot of like vegan butcher shops where you can get, you know, like lentil sausage that tastes just like chorizo or whatever. As, as somebody who eats meat right now, I don't see much of a reason for me to consume that. If I wanted chorizo, I would just have chorizo. But when I eat vegetarian food, rather than like make what I feel to be like a weird compromise for, for my own personal taste right now, uh, I would rather just eat, like, you know, beans. But, if I was a stricter vegetarian, maybe, you know, there's times where you get a craving for something and, and you can indulge it by by engaging in the, the vegetable-based analog. Sure, I got nothing against it. I mean, that's the... Uh, if, as long as we're talking about restaurant takes that will... You know, get me cancelled on Twitch. I've rerolled the whole room. Yes, that makes sense. I forgot about the D10. The uh, right alongside the salad take. People and and it annoys me, but people consider that you should only get the vegetarian option on a menu if you're a vegetarian. Sometimes a vegetarian entree just looks like it would hit the damn spot. Like anytime I'm at uh, like a Lebanese restaurant, very high percentage chance I get falafel i'm not getting falafel because like oh i really want uh chicken but i'm not eating meat i'm getting falafel because this shit is like is dynamite it's delicious yeah there's some fried cauliflower or something like that i eat meat when i go to an indian restaurant high percentage chance i get a chana masala or i get like an alu gobi or something like that and if I'm in control of the appetizers, I'm getting the vegetable pakora. I've had the fish pakora. I've had the chicken pakora. I feel like the vegetable pakora just goes harder. Something about the way that those red onions create like weird geometric shapes. It picks up all the batter. Anyway. Oh, did we win again? If we talk about classics, does my name get brought up? Slash Margaret. Was that Isaac 3? Let's do it again.